Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is a very special day on the 17th of December, 2020. From the 17th of December to the end of the Christmas octave, the Masses of the day are obligatory. We move on to our daily prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Messiah and Savior of the world, the hope of Israel and the hope of the nations. Be the ruler of my heart and the king of my home. May there be nothing in my life that is not under your wise rule and care. Amen. Reading the genealogy year after year assures us that the birth of Jesus, who is called the Christ, is a historical fact. We might look to the Lord and at times ask, who would dare rouse him? But the wisdom of God guides creation with power and love. Thus, we rejoice and exult that he has come to show mercy. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 2. Jacob called his sons and said to them, Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. You, Judah, shall your brothers praise. Your hand on the neck of your enemies, the sons of your father, shall bow down to you. Judah, like a lion's whelp, you have grown up on prey, my son. He crouches like a lion recumbent, the king of beasts. Who would dare rouse him? The scepter shall never depart from Judah, or the maze from between his legs, while tribute is brought to him and he receives the people's homage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 72 Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. The mountains shall yield peace for the people and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Justice shall flower in his days, the profound peace, till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his name be blessed for ever, as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed, all the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Alleluia, alleluia. O wisdom of our God most high, guiding creation with power and love, come to teach us the path of knowledge. Alleluia, alleluia. The genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. A reading from the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Terah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab, Aminadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David, the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, 
Jeram the father of Usaiah. Usaiah became the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Uhas, Ahas the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Amos, Amos the father of Josiah, Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Sheltiel, Sheltiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abud, Abud became the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, Zadok became the father of Akim, Akim the father of Eliud, Eliud the father of Eleazar, Eleazar became the father of Matan, Matan the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our meditation of the day comes from the Magnificat. The fruition of God's saving order. The new world order is this. God lets himself be so influenced by his love for his image and likeness that he becomes a little baby. He lets himself be laid in a crib to show that he will be both shepherd and pasture for his people. He who is eternity without aging subjects himself to the human law of becoming older. Although he is God, he takes all suffering unto himself like a weak human being. He does this to put an end to the law of death and to enable us to share in immortality. God's power is this, that he can be what he is not and yet still remain what he is. He is our God, the eternal Son of the Eternal Father. He is God and he is human because he stands in the middle between the Father and us. The reality of his flesh is revealed in his weakness and the reality of his majesty is revealed in his miracles. This was written by St. Zeno of Verona, who was a 4th century bishop and martyr. Daily Bible Verse from the Laudate The Lessons of the Genealogy of Our Savior, Jesus Christ The book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, Eleazar became the father of Mathan, Mathan the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Matthew 1, 1. Thursday, the 17th of December, 2020, third week of Advent. From the 17th of December, we enter a different and fast rhythm in our Advent journey. There is still time for good housekeeping, for example, confession and novena. Do you consider the genealogy boring? Not when you understand the purpose for its inclusion in sacred scriptures. The Holy Spirit, the author of the sacred text, does not waste words as human authors do. Here are a few reasons for the genealogy or family history of Jesus Christ. Number 1. Jesus Christ is truly God and truly man. He descended from the lines of Abraham and David. Number 2. His human family is not perfect like his church. It contains saints and sinners. 
He was not ashamed of his family, nor was he ever tempted to deny them. Number three. His family lineage was planned by God from the foundation of the ages. So do not be scandalized by what you see. Number four. By the time Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, gone were the days of the great patriarchs like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and great kings like David and Solomon. What we have are common folks like Joseph and Mary. God has a plan that will lead us to the humble stable in Bethlehem where Jesus will be born, the King of the Jews. Quote, Wisdom of the Most High, ordering all things with strength and gentleness, come and teach us the way of truth. Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer Lord, in this final week of preparation for your birth, I want to make ready a place for you in my heart. I believe that you are here with me and desire to speak to me. Because I love you, I too have longed for this moment of silence and recollection though it hasn't been easy to find. I trust that you and your grace will accompany me throughout this busy day so that I might make the decisions that I will be pleasing in your sight. Our Petition Lord, help me to be more aware of my human dignity and irradiate this to all I meet today. Our first challenge, rebuilding the family tree. Many people try to trace their family genealogy going back centuries to determine their origins. Sometimes this search is easy because the family has lived in the same country and perhaps even the same city for many generations. In other cases, the search requires them to cross oceans dig up buried records, and rummage through old, dust-covered volumes. The rebuilding of their family tree is an attempt to come to a deeper understanding of who they are. Jesus didn't need all this study of his pedigree. If there is one conviction we could call the cornerstone of his life, it is his awareness that he was, has come from the Father and has assumed a human nature out of obedience to his Father's will. We too come from the Father who created us. We too have a mission to fulfill here on earth. This is what gives meaning to our entire existence. Our very origin springs from the love of God the Father. Second challenge. God is always faithful. The genealogy in the Gospel of Matthew goes all the way back to Abraham, our father, uh, in the faith. God has made a promise to Abraham, stating that he would make him the father of a host of nations. Genesis 17, 4. Matthew wants to make it very clear from the very outset of his gospel that God is always faithful to his promises. Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David and the son of Abraham, is the fulfillment of everything God had promised. Thus, St. Peter would correctly proclaim there is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. Acts 4.12 Our very salvation rests in Jesus Christ. Do we turn to Jesus not only in our eternal salvation, but also in the midst of our daily trials and tribulations? Is He the constant reference point of our day? Third challenge. Summary of human history. Man was born for greatness. He was created in the image and likeness of God. 
The collection of names in Matthew's genealogy is arranged in three groups, as if to make a statement about human history. First, Abraham, through his obedience, deepened the covenant with God. Man was born and raised up to be a king. Second, yet man turned out to be a tyrant. He abused the freedom God had given him, defying, disobeying, and turning his back on his Creator. With tears in his eyes, the father watched his prodigal son depart into exile. Third, however, God did not write human history to end in tragedy. He sent his son into the world to help man regain his greatness, to raise him up to greater heights, to become sons of God. History is not a road leading nowhere. Its goal is for us to be in heaven with God. So it's not enough for us to know our origin is in the love of God the Father and our salvation is in Jesus Christ. We need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in bringing about God's gracious plan. We can invest our time to bring about Christ's kingdom in the workplace, in our homes, and in society. Our Conversation with Christ Lord, your birth this Christmas is the center and culmination of human history. I thank you for the gift of life, for the mission you have entrusted to me, for granting me the possibility of recovering my dignity and for adopting me as your child. I know my weakness and the mire I am capable of descending into, but for the help of your grace. I offer you this day and every day of my life as a gift of love to you. May this gift be always pleasing in your sight. Our resolution. Today I will examine my conscience and prepare my soul to make a good confession so that my heart might be a worthy dwelling for the baby Jesus who is coming. Our meditation. Do you know who your ancestors were, where they came from, and what they passed on from their generation to the next? Genealogies are very important. They give us our roots and help us to understand our heritage. Matthew's genealogy of Jesus traces his lineage from Abraham, the father of God's chosen people, through the line of David, King of Israel. Jesus the Messiah is the direct descendant of Abraham and David, and the rightful heir to David's throne. God in his mercy fulfilled his promise to Abraham and to David that he would send a savior and a king to rule over the house of Israel and to deliver them from their enemies. The Lord Jesus is the fulfillment of all God's promises. When Jacob blessed his sons, he foretold that Judah would receive the promise of royalty which we see fulfilled in David. Genesis 49.10 We can also see in this blessing a foreshadowing of God's fulfillment in raising up his anointed king, Jesus the Messiah. Jesus is the fulfillment of all God's promises. He is the hope, not only for the people of the Old Covenant, but for all nations as well. He is the Savior of the world, who redeems us from slavery to sin and Satan, and makes us citizens of the kingdom of God. In Him, we receive adoption into royal priesthood and holy nation and sons and daughters of the living God. 1 Peter 1, 9 Do you recognize your spiritual genealogy and do you accept God as your Father and Jesus as the sovereign King and Lord of your life? 
Lord Jesus, you are the Messiah and Savior of the world, the hope of Israel and the hope of the nations. Be the ruler of my heart and the king of my home. May there be nothing in my life that is not under your wise rule and care. Amen. Family Matters A Family Record of Jesus Christ Matthew 1 1 Wait! Don't skip the genealogy because we love the Lord. We can't wait to learn more about Him. Here are a few things God reveals about Himself in St. Matthew's genealogy. Jesus Christ is truly God and truly man. God made man. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, 467, 468, 470. Jesus is God, the Messiah, born of a virgin. Matthew 1, 16, 18. Family comes first. These are the first verses of the New Testament, and God can't wait to introduce His family. God works through people, lots of them. God loves families. Jesus lived in one for 30 years. Some family members are extraordinary. For example, Mary, Joseph, David. Others are faithful, for example, Ruth, Josiah. Some are nondescript, Eliud, Azor. Others are despicable, for example, Manasseh, Rehoboam. Jesus considers them all his family. God's plan was accomplished through each one. Some, like Ruth and Rahab, were outsiders, but were welcomed into God's family for their loving faithfulness. God is pro-life. He loves fathers, mothers, and children. God has a place in His plan for every baby, including those born of prostitution. Perez, Matthew 1, 3, Genesis 38, 1 through 30. Injustice, Solomon, Matthew 1, 6, 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 27, and mixed marriages, Obed, Matthew 1, 5, Ruth 4, 5. God is patient. His plan may take a long time to unfold. God is not ashamed to be called their God, Hebrew 11.16. And Jesus is not ashamed of his family. He loves them. Beloved, we are God's children now, 1 John 3.2. Let us love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Our prayer, Father, thank you for adopting me into your family. May I please you and bring honor to your family name. God's promise to us, the scepter shall never depart from Judah. Genesis 49.10 Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ, What more do I require of thee than that thou endeavor anew to resign thyself to me? Whatsoever thou givest except thyself, I regard not. I seek not thy gift, but thyself. We are God's hands, feet, and voice, 
May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.